Anime, anime, anime TV chat. Hello and welcome to Anime TV. I'm your host, Sunshine and Shades, and today I'll be reviewing Waiting in the Summer. Who am I kidding? It's nowhere near nice enough for sunglasses. Summer break is finally here, and there is no better way to spend your holiday than filming an independent sci-fi movie with all of your friends. That's what Waiting in the Summer's main protagonist thinks anyway. He has even assembled his cast, which includes the two cutest lovesick girls that his town has to offer, a schoolboy that appears to be in his 30s, and a homeless, sexy alien girl that needs a place to stay. It's hard to tell if their film will be a success, but one thing is for sure, romance is going to be in the air this summer. I really do love these How We Spent Our Last Summer Together shows. I love the beach episodes, the firework festivals, the scenery is always really beautiful and the humming of cicadas in the background always adds a layer of depth to the show. Everything feels so nostalgic. Which is odd because at no point in my life have I ever been a Japanese teenager. On the DVD case for Waiting in the Summer it says lights, camera and teen angst. And well, that's exactly what you get from this show. Sure, there's going to be scenes of the children filming their movie, but the majority of the screen time will be spent on character development and romance. And well, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with a show based around a summer romance. There are plenty of romances playing out in Waiting in the Summer, and it can all get pretty messy. I'd like to call the show a big giant love triangle, but to be honest, it's probably more of a conga line? The main guy fancies the alien girl. That's nice and easy. He, however, has a secret admirer in Kana, who also has a secret admirer of her own. And yes, even that guy has a secret admirer too. So, like I said, it's all very messy. The show does, however, have a diagram to help us through this mess. Weighing in the Summer is a pretty standard romance show and does very little to distinguish itself from everything else on the market. So really, there's only one factor that can determine whether Waiting in the Summer will be a success or not, and that is its characters. Luckily for Waiting in the Summer, its characters are pretty damn good. Its two lead protagonists aren't anything spectacular, however its support cast really come together and pick up the slack. Firstly, you have Remon Senpai. Remon has a pretty dark sense of humour, and loves messing around with everyone's love lives. She also has an awesome evil laugh. <laughs> Secondly, you have Mio, a cute lovesick schoolgirl who is hiding a secret that anime fans won't guess in a million years. Finally, you have the plucky tomboy, Kana. Kana is the real star of the show. She fancies the main character and has her feelings dragged through the mud in every single episode. It's hard to watch, but you can't help but love her for it. On top of all of those awesome characters, you also have the adorable alien mascot character, Rinon. Rinon might be a glorified Pikmin, but he adds cuteness and humour to every scene he is in. God bless mascot characters. On this occasion, my recommendations will essentially be a recap of how I first encountered this show. A long time ago, I saw a fun romance show called Please Teacher. Then, several years later, another show was released, called Waiting in the Summer. Both shows have exactly the same key animator and scriptwriter. And, well, Waiting in the Summer is essentially the spiritual successor of Please Teacher, with just a little fine-tuning to the format. Both shows are about an older alien woman that comes to Earth and falls in love with and eventually moves in with a Japanese schoolboy. Both shows have heaps of romance playing in the background, and both shows have a mascot character that performs exactly the same function. So yeah, if you've watched either of these shows, then I would definitely recommend checking out their spiritual companion. Waiting in the Summer might not be anything special, but with a solid cast and an ability to pull at your heartstrings, watching this show will be an enjoyable experience. In particular, the final episodes are truly exhilarating. 80%. Anyway, that's the end of my video. Thanks for watching. If you like romance but haven't seen this show yet, then I would highly recommend checking it out. Just pack yourself a box of tissues first. 
Thank <laughs> you.